This is the right foot from a horse called Mr M. I've already done a sagittal section through the middle and I've taken out the navicular bone as well because I wanted to see what that looked like inside. So that's uh, on a separate video. But let me just show you what I've done now. So I've now taken slices like a stack of pennies from the coronary band. Well, just at that top here, just before the coronary band. So this is still hoof capsule at this point, even though it looks an odd color. That's because you've got the periopal all across there. And I've done, taken one centimeter slices. So I've got a centimeter there, a centimeter there. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to see what this looked like looking down in onto the lamina. Now remember I've taken out the navicular bone, I've also taken out the short pastern, so this is why it's going to look a little bit odd. But I really wanted to focus on some other things with this video. So let me just show you some of the findings. I'm actually going to start with this slice here, the slice which is looking down, because that's actually the most interesting slice. So just get your bearings, we're two centimetres down from the very top of the hoof capsule here. And let's have a look at this. This is actually quite an interesting cut. We've got a bit of tissue missing here, so ignore that. That's going to be where the navicular bone was sitting. And this is the deep digital flexor tendon here, and you can still see some of the yellow in in that DDFT, which signifies there's some unhappiness and damage to the tissue. And that's what that yellow means. Well, the first thing I noticed when I looked at this half, remember, we're only looking at half. So imagine if we were actually looking at this hoof as a whole, this is where the toe is here. I'll just get that into view for you. So that's how we're looking at it, a cut through there. I haven't taken anything off the bottom. So what you're seeing is what that looked like as soon as the shoe came off, very flat. So if we look at this view here, and imagine if I had a whole foot, we would have the same mirror image coming across the back here as well. This is the coffin bone, and this is where you get the bridge at the back of the coffin bone. That, that looks like a weird sort of shape. And this here, this is a ligament of some sort. I can't remember what one it is, but I'll show you on a coffin bone where it is. So this is a coffin bone. This is the toe area here. This is the heel. And the area that we're actually looking at in that sample is that little part there, that little indentation that's through there. So there must be some sort of ligament which actually attaches in there. And I think that's what we're seeing. And if you look at it from this side, you can see it is a bit of an oval. That's why we're seeing an oval in here. Because we're looking at that same spot. At first I thought this was just artifact, and but I've now realized that it's actually a part of a ligament through there. So the next thing that we can see here is the beautiful collateral cartilage. Well, this was his right foot, so this must be the lateral collateral cartilage. And what's amazing is actually how big it is. You know, it's not a thin little thing that was running all the way around there. It actually runs all the way around to here. It's quite incredible, really. It's filling up this area here, which is just behind the coffin bone. It's coming up around here as well. And I've got some macro photography of this area around here because that's also so interesting. It almost looks like there's fascia through here. Now I'm not sure if it is or if it's some sort of damage to the coffin bone, but I'll show that to you and you can make your own mind up what that is. I thought it was pretty amazing just how big this was. Now this part here is the collateral groove of the frog. And so what we're seeing here is we're almost at the part where we're at the very edge of the collateral groove, the very end of it. So if I turn it round, what we're looking at is we're looking at it deep in there. Next. The next thing about this is this part round here, which is where the sensitive lamellae, which comes off of the coffin bone here and round here, are going to interdigitate with the insensitive lamellae, which are coming off the hoof wall. Now, as we expected, it just looks like a load of mush. It's literally, it's such, dis, it's such a disorganized tissue. We can just about see some of the strands of the insensitive or the epidermal lamellae through there. 
these are these little white structures and they should interdigitate with some really beautiful they would look like sausages of red which are the dermal lamellae that's the correct name for it or the sensitive lamellae but you can see they're just they're not really interweaved together this looks very scarred it looks plump it looks devoid of blood and there's literally no blood when I when I push this there's just tissue fluid which is oozing out of here but there's no real blood which is oozing which is very sad and it's showing how these lamellae the sensitive lamellae that are coming off the coffin bone here are just macerated they've just been pulled apart from the insensitive lamellae one interesting finding is when I look at the distance between here and here it's probably about seven millimeters but when, as we come around here the distance is actually smaller and as we get to the back of the foot it's really tiny and what you can see is you can see where the lamellae the insensitive lamellae are pretty good at this point you can see that they are still intact around here they haven't just turned to disorganized tissue and i'm thinking that all I'm, and i'm thinking that the damage is all around here and we don't get such a lot of damage around there now i can't think that that's right because I would have thought that if you've got laminitis, it's going to affect the whole of the lamina through there, not just the front, it's going to affect the back as well. But always it seems that the coffin bone either dips down or it drops down because of the lamina connection. And it, that could be why we're seeing a bigger gap through here compared to what we've got here. Now the other thing we have to be aware of is that the way I've done my cut and I've tried to go absolutely parallel with the top of the hoof wall, what we could be seeing is we could be seeing an effect of um, the way the cut has been done and that this just looks smaller at the back because of the cut, because it's been done on an angle. So we, we have to bear that in mind, it, it could be due to that. And it could be that if I'd actually cut this from the bottom like this, we might find that the hoof wall was the same width all the way round, as well as this distance between here, between the insensitive and the sensitive lamellae. So my plan will be to do another slice through here, another centimetre and carrying on down. And I think what we should see because we've got a wedge through here, it's called a lamina wedge. So what that means is that this should be a straight line between the coffin bone and the hoof wall. And what's happened is it's, it's, it looks like a wedge of cheese. I mean, it's not, we're not seeing it as well here because we're further down. But if I had added all the other segments together, you would have seen that the wedge would be much thinner at this end compared to the bottom. And I'm quite interested if I can do my cut in just the right place is to actually take a slice through there. I think that's going to be really interesting. So what I need to do is I need to take my centimetre slices. So I'm going to do about one here and then one's going to be there. And then I need to try and catch that one through there. So that's my plan because I want to see what this looks like looking down. And I think it's going to be quite revealing. Now I'm just going to quickly show you this slice here because as I was playing around I sort of put, put these two together. Now remember that we are one slice, we are, we're a saw blade thickness between the two and um, basically we should see like a, we should really see a mirror image between these two and I think we just about can. I think if I just move that apart a tad like that, that's what we would expect to see if we were looking at this foot in its entirety. Of course, this side here is going to look slightly different because we're further towards the ground. And you can see that because you've got this little oval down here. And like I said, that was part of the frog is starting to come through the collateral grove. And we can't see it on the other side because we're just a little bit higher. Interesting that that front area 
it almost looks like it's going to be a creaner in there. Can you see how it's like dipping down at that little bit at the top tip there? And a creaner is where you have like a little divot out of the coffin bone and you have a funny little divot out of the wall as well on the inside. And that could possibly be what we're seeing, but I think we'll know once we do another slice further down towards the sole if we do have a creaner or not. But now this is defrosting and I can start wobbling it around. I think this is quite interesting. I just want to show you how elastic this area is around here. Now you've got to remember that this is very pathologic and this has all been ripped apart, but look at this movement. Now I, I wouldn't have expected to see such a movement like that if this was a better connected foot. So there is quite a bit of movement. And if I, if I pull the coffin bone away, you can see there is quite a bit of movement there. Now, to be fair, this is just one slice, so it doesn't have the rest of the foot all holding it together. And this, what I'm showing you, could be utterly meaningless. But as it stands on its own, this slice like this is not just a rigid slice. If this was a piece of metal, a slice of metal, you wouldn't have different parts to be able to do that. 